There are many options to test for SSL vulnerabilities. Most of these options have hard to read output or are hard to configure or use. This is where TestSSL comes to the rescue. Its readable output and its use of the default OpenSSL stack and not a custom implementation makes TestSSL a go-to tool in checking certificates for misconfigurations, vulnerabilities and weaknesses. In this video, we will show you how to use TestSSL, how to use its flags to get the most out of the tool, how to read the output and finally we will show you something that most administrators forget to check and that could easily yield observations during a pen test. By default, TestSSL is not installed on Kali. The first thing we need to do is download it. We can do this either by going to the Git repository or by downloading it using the app repository. Once we have downloaded TestSSL, we can simply run TestSSL followed by a URL or IP and TestSSL will run on the target. If we want to test a list of targets, we can create a list of hosts in a file. This file we can run with the IL flag followed by the file name. Now that TestSSL is running, we start seeing output on the screen. This output might be confusing at first, but its color coding will make it easy to spot issues. Nevertheless, we will go to the output together to ensure that you understand what you are seeing. The first thing that TestSSL does is try to detect the service that we want to test. In this case, it has detected an HTTP service on our target host. It will also obtain the IP addresses that the target has set in the name servers. The first item that is tested are the protocols that are supported by the target server. We can see that several protocols are supported. SSL protocols, TLS protocols, NPN and ALPN. Of these options, TLS 1 and 1.1 and both SSL protocols are deprecated. While they are still better than no encryption, the deprecated SSL and TLS protocols have known vulnerabilities. The cipher category section tests several types of issues that could be with ciphers. The explanation is encapsulated between the parentheses after each test. When testing, it is common to see that obsolete CBC ciphers are offered. It used to be very common to also see triple DES ciphers. This however has become more rare in the last two years. The next section tests forward secrecy. This will test if encrypted messages reveal a key that was used to encrypt the user's current or previous session. Certain Diffie-Hyman encryption curves could cause the section to give a warning about the potential security issues of the used curve. In the following section, the server preferences are checked. TestSSL checks which cipher is preferred and what order the server prefers the different ciphers. Next is testing the default server certificate. A basic message is sent to the server to see how it reacts and with what certificate it responds. In this section you can read the details such as which domain the certificate belongs to, its creation and expiration date, and who issued the certificate. If the target is a website, it will also show the standard HTTP header response section. This will show if the HSTS header is set and if security settings such as cookies and cache control have been enabled. The following section is the one that is of most interest to us. This section shows particular vulnerabilities that exist within the certificate that we scanned. When we find an item in this list during a pen test, we usually report the issue. Be aware that most of these vulnerabilities are not accepted by bug bounty programs and do not give any rewards. In the two final sections of the output, we can see that ciphers are tested in mass to determine the strength of the encryption against the server and the response of the server is measured to see if there's any anomalies in responses to specific browsers, operating systems and applications. One of the items that TestSSL is also able to scan are services that use the start TLS command. This command allows certain services to upgrade their unencrypted connection to an encrypted one. TestSSL supports the following protocols for start TLS. FTP, SMTP, LMTP, POP3, IMAP, XMPP, Telnet, LDAP, NNTP, Postgres and MySQL. To use this function, you can use the T flag followed by the protocol name. 
Make sure to not forget to add the port that you want to target to the host by adding a colon between the port and the host name of the target. To save the output of TestSSL, we have several options. The OL flag saves a log file of TestSSL. This log file is similar to the terminal output. The OJ flag saves a JSON file. This file is the preferred file type for programmatically processing the results. The OC flag saves a CVS output. The OH flag creates an HTML file of the output. This is similar to the terminal output. The final flag is the OA flag. This flag generates all of the output types. You should now know enough to run TestSSL and use it during your engagements. If you learned anything, please leave a like, comment or subscribe and thanks for watching.